Hello, welcome back to Carlis and today we've got something really, really exciting. This is the Mini SE or as some people call it, the all-electric Mini. Well, to me, to me at least, this is probably one of the best cars Mini has ever produced. And let's get into that and see why. So actually, the Mini SC arrived on our shores in 2020. This is actually a facelift version which arrived in 2021. Okay, so what sets it apart from the pre-facelift car is this. The front end, everything else is pretty much the same, but the front end is new following all the other Minis which also updated in 2021. So instead of the bumper you get in the older Mini, now you get a hexagonal type face here on the Mini SC facelift. There's no more fog lights. Instead, there's uh, air inlets and that's about it. Everything else pretty much is the same, including the Corona wheels. I mean, sorry, sorry, not Corona wheels, power spoke wheels. So as you can see, there's not much to tell that it's a Mini Electric. Okay, how can you tell that it's a Mini Electric? Well, at the front, there's no more grille. Instead, there's like a aerodynamic flap. Uh, also, what makes it different from the ICE variants is that it's got mustard color accents everywhere. There's some at the wheels, the badges, at the wing mirror. Um, at the back, there's none of it except for the badges. But what makes it different from the ICE versions is this, the charging port, which if you can tell, it's got a big mini electric sign on it. So since this is an electric vehicle, it has a battery. The battery is baked into the car at the floor pan in a T-shape. So what capacity does this battery have in this Mini? It's a 32.6 kilowatt hour battery. Okay, it's not the largest battery in the world, but there's a reason for it. And we'll get into that a bit later. Since this car has a battery, we got to figure out the charging, right? So this car supports up to 11 kilowatts AC charging and 50 kilowatts DC charging. Now that's the fast, fast charging. So Mini says from 0 to 80%, the 11 kilowatt AC charging will take 2.5 hours. And for the 50 kilowatt DC fast charging, Mini says it'll get up to 80% in just 35 minutes. Now, to get any form of faster AC charging, you'd have to buy a wall box. Now, Mini sells you that. It's around five grand according to the brochure, and that's not even including installation. But if you don't want to go down that route, this car comes with a home charger. Um, it's not, you don't have to pay extra, it comes with the car and I've tried it out and it's just a normal three pin socket, you just plug it in and I managed to get about 10% in about two hours, just above 2.5 2 hours like that. Yes, that's not much, but if you just charge it overnight, Mini says you'll, you'll need about 15 hours to get it fully charged. I tried it out, it took a little bit longer than 15 hours, but it did charge it full in about, I don't know, 17 hours. Usually, when an electric vehicle is birthed from an ICE platform, something's got to give. But in this case, the boot, which is small anyway in most Minis, is still the same size as the ICE variant, where it is compromised is in the back seat. It's a bit tighter, and that's because the battery is in the floor pan. Okay, like I said before, the Mini SE has a 32.6 kilowatt hour battery. And that's not the biggest battery in the world. It gives you a very small range. And one of the reasons for that, I believe, is because Mini have tried to keep the weight down. Of course, they had their limitations because they're working on an ICE platform, but they had to keep some of the Mini's characteristics, which is like lightweight. And because this Mini SE is only about 150 kilograms heavier than the ICE version, it still has the same lightweight, fun driving characteristics characteristics as the ICE version. But in my opinion, there's a lot of things in this car that makes it even better than the ICE variant. So before we move on any further, here are some of the standard stuff you'll get with the Mini SE. So type two charging cable and a home charger. Reverse camera. You get adaptive cruise control, 
you also get autonomous emergency braking and you get lane departure warning. A 12 speaker Harman Kardon sound system, manual sport seats, which is leatherette, adaptive LED headlights, ambient lighting, dual zone climate control, and head up display. Oh, yay! All right, so if you've never been in an ICE Mini, then you can't tell this is a bit more squished. In fact, you probably just think it's a Mini, I expect it to be a bit more squished back here, but there is a difference between the electric and the three-door ICE Mini. But saying that, however, I mean, I'm 5'5 five five and I'm okay back here. I can do a lot of um, city moving about here and there. And I'm okay. But what I think these seats are built for are for kids. I mean, there's two ISO points here. And as you can see, there's a baby seat here. Kids will probably be fine in here. And I think that's what it's for anyway. At the front, it's a completely different story, which is why I think this car was mostly built for the two front passengers. Everything in here is as chic as any Mini is going to be. I mean, there's all these tactile, aeroplane style buttons here, toggles, all the materials is nice. There's an anthracite headliner. Mm -hmm. There's also an 8.0 inch infotainment screen with Apple CarPlay, no Android Auto, unfortunately. Um, there's also a digital meter cluster here, which is a really, really nice one because it moves with the steering wheel. So you're not gonna get it blocked if you move it up and down. Okay, one of the things that's interesting in this car is when you set it up to your navigation, it can show like a radius in your map. And that radius tells you how far the Mini can go. Now that's a cool feature and probably one that's useful because this car only has, for my personal experience, I'm getting about 160 kilometers, but that is from changing it to green plus mode but you're not going to drive it in that because it just doesn't give the mini this character that it deserves what you're going to probably do is just be in mid which makes it just a typical mini and that's going to give you about 150 kilometers of range fully charged now mini says that this car can have about 200 210 220 kilometers of range but i unfortunately have never reached that yet probably due to my driving style so yes apparently you can do up to 200 kilometers but realistically you're only going to get 150 kilometers of usable range and that, that's me like driving it like how it's supposed to be yes like i said you can put it into green plus which ups the range but everything is pretty limp you know and nothing really is what it's supposed to be in the mini anyway see the aircon just went really warm but yeah so 150 km range, it's not going to get you far, far at all. So if you ever decide to purchase a car, you got to put it in your head that, you know, this is just going to be an urban dweller. It's not going to go far. But if you ever had several cars at home and you had to do chores and you had to do it fast, this is the car that you want to be in, all right? Because it is just phenomenal. So you get the Mini Cooper the ICE version, okay, uh, it's got a little bit more power and it's a little bit lighter, okay, so this is 184 horsepower and 270 newton meters of torque and the ICE version, the Mini Cooper S, has about 189 horsepower and 280 newton meters of torque. So, this car is down on power, it's a bit heavier, but what it does ha have up its sleeve is the electric powertrain, which my god it suits the character of the mini so so much all right i'll give you an example okay like in the ICE variant okay it's a turbocharger in it, a two liter turbocharger in it. there's always going to be ICE problems with it okay like uh, ICE turbocharge problems with it like you know turbo spooling turbo lag yes although mini have done well in trying to minimize that it's always still going to have it whereas in this it's a bit like a ballistic missile, or just any missile for that matter. You see a gap in the road, you put your target there, and you press it, and boom, you're just there. It's so predictable. It doesn't really like require you to say, okay, am I going to make it? You are going to make it because you already know what you can do, and that gap there, you're just there, and you know that the car will reach there in a certain time at a certain speed. 
Speaking of that though, <laughs> this car does tend to turn you into an asshole driver. I'm sorry for my French language, but it's just so much fun. You're just gonna just drive it like a hooligan. I mean, oh my God, never before have I ever tried to like be this much of a on the road. I've not even, it's not me trying, it's just naturally coming out. I'm just like having so much fun. I forget, I forget that I'm being a on the road. It's just everything is just really, really nice. Like I said, the electric powertrain is nice, there's, there's no lag, it's just like the electric torque is just boom, it's just on, it's just going. And the steering, like any Mini, is just really tight, really precise. And when you combine that with the electric powertrain, you are going to be a pure and simple. It just brings it out of you. Yes, you can try to be conservative because you know you 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 have range to be concerned about, but I tended to forget about the range and just enjoy the car as a go-kart, okay? It's like a go-kart built for the city. Ah, it's just, it's just speechless. I'm just speechless. It's just so much fun. It really reminds me of the original Mini, you know, the one that Mr. Bean used to drive, not the modern ones. Why? Because that one was probably manual and this also has a manual characteristics, okay? Not like proper manual characteristics, but because of the regen braking, it almost feels like you're having like engine braking. So it's like if you put it in the aggressive mode before a corner and you lift off the, the accelerator pedal, it'll just like, you know, like when you're downshifting, you just go, the engine braking is there and you have a bit more control going into a corner. And that is fantastic. But speaking of the regen, I don't think it's appropriate for like slow moving traffic. But when you're on the B roads and you're trying to have fun like this, whoop, yep, yep. So yes, you have that, you know, slowing down before the corner so you can accelerate out, which is always fun bit in the car. But if it's slow moving traffic, I suggest you change it to low energy recovery. So what that means is a less aggressive setting. So that means the car will still roll instead of like having this engine braking effect. It's not the fastest car in the world, and, you know, you've got the John Cooper S and stuff like that. It's even like down on acceleration time compared to the Cooper S. But trust me, the torque matters in this car and because it's instantly there, it's just a whole world of fun in this car. And also, I, I, I don't know, I mean a lot of people say, oh yeah, we got to have the sound of the engine to make you feel alive and stuff like this. But I actually like appreciate quietness now in the car. And let's try this corner, look. Oh my God, look at that. You just, everything's just rolling around the car, but yeah, the car just grips and because the electric powertrain is there, it's just boom, you press it, you press the accelerator pedal and boom, there you go. That's what it's all about in this car. It's all about pure fun. Yeah, I know a lot of people say EVs are fun, like the XC40, they labeled it as a fun electric vehicle, but it wallowed around everywhere, it felt heavy, you know, like a butt up. you're driving a butt up. But this, man, it's because it's only 150 kilograms heavier than the ICE version, it is still lightweight, chuckable, fun, going around corners. Woo! My God, man. This is what I'm talking about. This is what a Mini is supposed to be like. There is torque steer when you go all out. And that to me is what makes it even more fun. It's like trying to tame a bull. Whoa. Ah, yes, this is what a Mini should be like. And to me, I think probably one of the best Minis ever created. I love it so much, despite its drawbacks of only having 150 kilometer range. But like, if you put it into your mind that you're not going to be traveling far in this and you're just going to be going around town, you have a fine daily driver that's pretty much a go-kart. Okay, a go-kart built for the city streets. But like I said, you got to be mindful of how you drive it because it just naturally brings out the d bag in you. Because it's so much fun. People say, okay, yeah, it's now heavier than the ICE version. How's the suspension? Like, uh, like we've experienced in the XC40 EV, okay, I'm not comparing Apple to Apple, but that car felt really heavy, like just felt lumber, everything. You just hit a pothole and you can just really feel it. But in this car, it's quite pliant and the balance is just excellent in this. I mean, the handling is tight, but it doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't feel like it's just going to crash everywhere. 
and it's still quite supple and I like that which presents a problem for Mini really if they were to like build an EV the next one after this and want to give it a bit more range they're going to have to put a bigger battery there's no two ways about it so what do you do? are you going to lose that fun characteristic about the car? because it's going to be heavier it's going to lose some of that charm this is a problem that Mini will have to probably face it's either that or just keep this as a limited range vehicle but you know, Mini, you're going to have to pull something out of the hat to do this um, and I can't wait to see can you imagine this with a bit more range with these driving characteristics man, I just can't imagine it it'll just be perfect sign me up, sign me up for that woohoo, come on alright Mini, I don't know man this is just too much fun too much oh, it is just driving like it is on rails it's just simply sublime Ah, oh, Mini, what have you done? You're going to have yourself a big problem. How do you increase the range without making this car heavier, losing some of its charm? I don't know, but you got to for the sake of electric vehicle fun. So that is the Mini SE. Here's another interesting fact about the Mini SE. This is the cheapest Mini you can buy in Malaysia at just a smidgen under 190 grand this is what you're gonna get okay so like I said before I mean if you buy this car and think that you're going to be treating it like a long haul cruiser you're all out of whack there it has to be treated like a city car a city car that Mini says they've done a survey they said that most people many 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 customers anyway they will use less than 20 percent of the range that this car can give on a daily basis so i don't know if that's true or not but i've been driving it around for a few days now and yes i haven't really driven it all the way down to like 20 kilometers range i've always ended up with about 70 80 and i've been everywhere i've even gone to putrajaya and back and it's still got about 50, 60 kilometers of range. So yes, it's okay. Yes, the range is not the best thing, but if you put it in your head that you want a fun car, one that doesn't need to go to a petrol station every day, and that you have to go home at night and charge it, this is the car for you. I really, really say, you really, really got to try out, but with the mindset that you're going to only buy this to use in the city. Now, Mini, you've got yourself a problem. How are you going to make a Mini, a newer one, with a longer range, without all that EV battery weight inside? I'm going to leave it down to you, but Mini, please do make it, because this is just simply amazing.